Hi there, today we're unboxing a power over ethernet CCTV system. So let's um, have a quick look at the packaging. Very plain, nothing really to that. Let's open up and take out what we have in there. There you go. So two packages within this one. I'll have the details scrolling up if you look at the side on the video. Just the spec of it. So this is a 720p system. It comes with four cameras by a company called, I think it's Car. that's how you pronounce it. Okay. So two, two packages. All looks plain. Obviously one saying it's got the cameras in it, the other one saying it's got the actual recorder in there. So let's start off checking out the recorder first perhaps. Okay. It's the box. And the recorder. Got a setup guide with some screws and another fitting for it and a CD. Got some cables in here. So two Ethernet cables. And that's it. Nothing more in this one have a look what we have in the actual box that comes with it. Okay, the remote. Looks familiar. I think I've seen this on another make as well. Power cable, UK and fused, so that's good. Power adapter that plugs into the cable and finally a mouse. Okay, Let's check out the box containing the cameras. Okay, two more additional Ethernet cables in this one. So that's quite good. Let's move the camera back a bit. These look much longer to be honest. And the cameras. Okay, so let me lay it all out and we'll have a close inspection of each item. Okay, so here we have all the packaging emptied out and I'll briefly go through each of the items you get in there. So first of all, the mouse itself, very cheap to be honest. Yeah, not, I wouldn't say it's a very good quality solid mouse, but yeah, it's okay. I guess all these manufacturers do a similar thing, just put these cheapo mouses in there. So that's, that's that. Okay, next one is the remote. Have a quick look inside. Yeah, seems okay. Very light and not surprisingly, no batteries as usual. I wish they'd just give some batteries with it. No biggie really, but nice to, um, nice to have as usual. I don't think I've seen any manufacturer give batteries so far. That's that. Again, I've shown the power cable already. It's good that it's obviously it is UK based um, because I'm in UK and it has a fuse. So one of the things we noticed on a, another system we reviewed didn't have a fuse on there. So obviously a bit of a hazard there. So that's that. The actual power supply itself that this plugs into seems okay. Reasonable construction there, you know, no, no issues there. So, so all good. Cables that come to connect the cameras to the actual recorder. I like the fact they're black, to be honest, you know. Um, I don't like seeing the actual ethernet style ones, I guess, outside the house. I don't know if they're outdoor. I'll have a little read up, see if they are. I hope they are outdoor based. So that'll be quite useful. 
Um, good, it has the actual ceiling cover already on there. Another one I reviewed um, didn't have this on there, which was a bit of an irritation to be honest. You'd have to literally cut the cable off and then refit it. And what I do like obviously about the Ethernet ones, that you can crimp the connector on. So if you just wanted to make a tiny hole just for the cable to go through, it's ideal. So it looks like there's two shorter cables and you've got two longer cables. It's all good, let me shift those out of the way. Next thing, the actual quick setup guide. So good, nothing too complicated. You know, it's got a diagram, obviously how it should be put together. And that's about it, no other instructions to go with that. CD, I'll have a look what's on there in a little bit. Maybe it's the app that goes on the PC, you know, so that's that. Screws, I guess this would be, I'm just thinking if it would be for a hard disk, but looks like I think this one does come with a hard disk from what I recall. So a one terabyte one. And you've got this connector, PTZ related, that sort of goes into there. So that's that. Sorry, it goes around this way. Yeah. Okay, so that's those. Let's look at the actual recorder. I'll give you a good zoom in on that. Looks quite nice, to be honest. Nice, cool design to it. So obviously you have your menu controls on there, your menu escape, arrows, enter and escape. I don't know why it's got two escapes on there. That's interesting. Um, alarm, record, infrared, just there. And then you've got USB. Okay, good construction there. Nice solid metal. Vents on the sides, just there as well. Obviously model details underneath. That's good, let's see the back. You've got your four ethernet ports on there. You've got your VGA, your HDMI, obviously ethernet and two USB. And obviously it's given an indication what they're for. One's for a mouse. The other one's for a backup. So if you plug in an external drive, you can back up um, the recordings on there. And then obviously the PTZ related connection. So let me show that once more. So obviously it goes in like so. And you've got some screws there just to be able to tighten the cable. Yep and then the power just in there. So good, yeah, nice small box and good build quality. Let's have a look at one of the cameras. So, quite small, bit tubby to be honest, yeah. A little bit uh, wide, but nice and compact, which I like, you know. I don't like the big bulky cameras, so it's good. So let me give you as close up as possible. So obviously you've got some foam there, you know, to seal the back once you screw it in. You've got a point there. So if you drill a large hole, obviously this could go into your property, the actual uh, ethernet connection point, and then you could actually have it connected flush. So no cables are visible. So not, no possibility of anyone trying to cut anything. The only thing they'd have to do is literally smash or damage the camera. So also the possibility of having the cable coming out so you don't have to drill such a large hole like I did mention before. And obviously the way it connects, standard with these devices, just plug it straight in like so. This goes over like that. And then you've got the seal just there. So it's watertight. That's ideal. So <clears throat> what I was mentioning before, so if I take this off, so obviously it's quite a bulky thing to put through. If you wanted to still have it hanging out, the seals are great. And obviously you can re-crimp this connector. So you just chop the wire off 
um, drill a small hole so you can get it going through your house and then the other end you can just connect straight onto the camera. Okay, let me give you more of a zoom in of the actual camera itself. It does look pretty nice, I have to admit. And obviously you've got the um, adjusters there, so you can put it into a certain position. Um, actually, I am surprised it didn't come with a, an Allen key. Let me have a quick check in the box again. Oh, no, sorry, my mistake. It also did come with some fixtures and fitting for each of these and Allen keys, so that's good. So you can adjust these and then tighten them up completely so they're not loose. So excellent there. Okay, show a bit more of the camera. And that's it. Okay, next thing is, let's have a go at plugging this all in and we'll show um, the startup and the initial setup. Okay, so we've got our system all near a monitor and some power. So first of all, we'll just go straight to the back and start initially connecting up the cameras. So this is quite straightforward really. So if I get one of the cable bundles, you just pull a little bit of the cable out and then we can just plug one end in to the camera. We'll do it the correct way around. So obviously it doesn't really matter, but for this actual seal, when you're doing it for real, then you've got to make sure it's on the correct side, which is this side. So that's that. And the other end, obviously, plugs into the actual CCTV system. So just there. That's all four cameras connected in. A bit messy, I know, but there you go. You see four are connected in. Now we'll plug in an ethernet to our local network here, and then we'll plug in a HDMI, which is just there. And then we've got a mouse, the actual one that came with the actual system. So that's just here. And what I'll do, I'll plug the power in, which is just there in a moment. Let me just tidy this up a little bit. And then I can get the camera pointing to the screen so you can see the initial start up. Okay, so everything's laid out. I'm gonna plug the power in. Just let it go through its initial boot sequence. always good to initially lay out all the cameras so you can sort of confirm they're all working and there's no errors. It's going through its initial startup. Curious what the OS is going to be like on this system. Okay, so this is a familiar OS. This is the one used by the Anki system, A-Zone as well. It's quite familiar in using this one. Oh, there you go, it's picked up one of the cameras straight away. So that's just pointing literally towards a window which has a blind closed at the moment. Okay, let's see if we can go to the four menu for um, camera option, which you see there. Let's just try. It's one. Okay, there's the other. Just try moving each one. There you go. Picture quality is pretty sharp. Very good. And this is obviously the first time I'm turning it on. So I haven't configured anything yet. Let's go for the quick set. And I know default password should be blank. And there you go. Four systems have connected and there the IP address is it's picked up. It's a bit strange. It's not gone through any sort of startup. 
Um, let me just quickly check this main menu. So, okay, so that's quite good. The fact it's I'll click guide anyway, and this will let you pick the basics initially. So maybe the system's been on for testing during manufacturing, but that's fine. It's nice to see it just working straight out of the box without any sort of um, amendments from myself. So there you go, it's the current time zone. Okay retest testing yeah it's already on there very impressed so first off it's just just started working straight away no issues very easy to use in that way so this is the option that installs a mobile app so I can quickly show that let me just bring it up on my mobile so it's the XMI application so my current version's just here so I don't need to go through this side of things so if I just hold that there let's see what the next screen is next screen actually gives me the serial number so if I just stop s filming for a moment put the serial number in I can give you maybe a brief glimpse of it that's just there it's like a QR code so I'll just scan that in so I can add the system in. Okay, so there you go. I've scanned it in and it's appeared, at, uh, I've typed in test. And that's the next screen you see now. So please select auto connected mode or manual mode. Quick set recommended. We'll just go for quick set, no big deal. And there you go, all the cameras are there already. Next, and that's it. Thank you for choosing our products and away you go. Okay, that one's gone for some reason, but always good, like I've said in previous reviews I've done of CCTV systems. You want to make sure these things are working when you get them. If there's any faults, last thing you want to do is fit, fit it all in and then have to go back there and take it down to check what the issue is. So there you go, all of them are working, which is a, a good start, definitely, straight away. So I'll run through the menu options quickly. The main menu, see what we have under record, the so record config. So regular detect and alarm. So regular schedules recordings for 60 minute intervals. So you'll get everything being recorded. Detect actually means if there's any motion detected and it'll record then. So if you want it to just do on motion detect, you'd untick this option, yeah. Alarm is when there's any sort of um, I guess motion you want to activate an alarm to go with it so if you want an email sent you could make sure this is ticked so we're fine with what we've got at the moment so I'll okay to that oh let me look back in the advanced here okay nothing in addition to that playback obviously we can play back anything we have there so if I go that and just pick a camera there really wouldn't be much to look at because obviously it hasn't started really with much info on there so that's fine we'll just go we'll just go up window go back up so this is where you can back up the data to a USB drive so this is useful come out of this alarm settings so this is good the motion detection here so if you enable that sensitivity level obviously if you have small amounts of movement on there you don't want it always going off maybe leaves going past or something if it's pointing outside uh, you can set a region so if you've got a camera pointing outside you could say I just want the red region being in the motion detect area the rest of it can be left uh, out so if I did that, anything entering this area, it wouldn't get um, caught with the motion detection. So let me leave that on. So that's good. Let's quit out of there. And that's that one. So we don't want that at the moment. 
uh, video blind if the video signal actually goes you can actually get it to do something for instance send a message to the unit either buzz or even send an email right to log so very useful even FTP option there which is nice very standard for this OS video loss if there's a loss of video similar thing again you can make the system show a message buzzer to go off FTP upload even send an email log again alarm input so if the alarm goes off you know if you've got it ticked so this is good for um, say you had a porch area you're monitoring and someone entered the area you wanted to send it um, either to buzz while you're in your house so you know someone's there or send you um, an email just to let you know that someone's entered that area so it's quite useful it would be probably quite good if you had it in a home you know maybe inside area so you know if someone's entered within a certain area so the inside of a porch area perhaps so very useful abnormality so this is sort of a different events you could get you know and how you want it to respond there's no sort of um, alerts for these but you can set them up if there's no storage etc uh, storage device error storage no space or IP conflicts so yeah let's go back system general option obviously time zone other options storage full what to do overwrite obviously which is good it's there by default encode so this is a 720p system hence why we've only got that on there so this is just some compression details and things regarding the actual recording and then network this is the network settings on the current test network I've got this plugged into net service general services you can have so SMTP this is where you'd set up the emailing you know so click enable put your say say for instance your Gmail SMTP server username password sender receiver uh, so that's the from and the two parts that's good so the next thing uh, you've got dynamic DNS you can get that setting it as well and there you go basic good to see this as well the, the cloud settings so you can connect to it um, via the cloud so okay let's carry on display settings you can change the resolution you know go lower higher so this is fine you know being 720 for PTZ system okay Tor enable a Tor if you had one of the PTZ systems digital okay channel status for each of them channel type so obviously you've got okay interesting the 960 selected on that one so that's fine okay let's go back advanced storage so how much storage is available so one terabyte with this one accounts so user user account which is default and an admin account online user nope you can't see anyone connected default output so sorry uh, uh, output adjustment auto maintain so you can get it rebooting on a regular basis restoring of the system all the settings if you've got into a bit of a mess upgrade here I won't give click on this device info that will have things like the serial number so if someone knows your serial number they can connect to your system but obviously they'll need to know a username and password so with these systems always ensure you've set up the username and password and import export of the log okay next to that info hard disk info that's the uh, performance on each of the channels for the camera a log what's been going on okay so I can actually show 
the XMI app running on Android. So as you can see, I'm running on the Wi-Fi home network. I've registered my account on there and you've already seen me add in the system. So I can just select the cameras I want to view and preview and just click the start preview option. And there you go, as simple as that. It's appeared straight away. So very good. I'll move one of the cameras just to show it's live. It's a slight, slight time delay, but no surprise you get that with all these systems. Now, what's interesting with this is I can, I can turn off the Wi-Fi and let it go to the data connection. Let's let it kick in. I might have to come out just for a moment and then hit preview again. So I've had to, I've not opened up any ports. There you go. Each of the cameras appearing one by one. And there you go, you can see them moving. Excellent. There you go. No amendments to your firewall or your router or anything like that. So good, all cloud-based. Okay, so I've shown that. Let me move on to the next test. Okay, so I've taken one of the cameras outside, just pointing it out the window at the back of the property. And this gives you a good indication of the actual performance in the evening with night vision. So pitch black outside at the moment and the picture quality is very good yeah very clear uh, sharpness wise I'm not sure let's let's zoom into a, a color one it's quite good I'll have to do the test in the daytime that will give a better indication of the distance but it is very clear you can see a lot going on sharpness wise it's reasonable obviously being 720 um, it is still very good. Okay, so I've set one of the cameras up outside and with this interface itself, if you just move the mouse over to your camera, double click, you'll actually select that camera and it will go in for a better view. So clarity wise, very good at 720p. It's giving good clarity around the garden. Sharpness wise is reasonable as well. So yeah, very good in the evening. You can see some lights out there we have in the garden as well. And you can see some additional things in the background. So yeah, no, no, it's quite sufficient to keep an eye out in the evening. And just to note, outside it is completely pitch black. So yeah, a good test just to show that one. And I could also show the picture quality on the Android app as well, just to show you that. So there you go, smaller screen, it looks even sharper on there. So I hope this helps to give an idea of night vision. Okay, so next test would be what it's like in the daytime. Okay, we have the camera now displaying the daytime image. Quality is very good, as you can see. So 720p, as I've mentioned previously. I'll be honest, obviously I've seen 1080p on these types of cameras, and personally I can tell the difference, you know. The clarity is much sharper on 1080p. But this is still nicely acceptable, you know, nothing wrong with it. I'll show the Android display as well next. So just to show the clarity on that. Very nice and clear. So there you go. Okay, so we've shown the camera being unboxed, the view in the daytime and the nighttime and also the Android app. I do have another video showing the different viewing options on this, you know, on the PC as well and the actual configuration I've got. So if you look at the end of the video, 
I'll put um, a link to that. So the actual unit itself, it's very nice build quality. It's got a big neon light here. Not really required, but looks cool to be honest. Um, and a record indicator on there as well. So very nice solid build quality. I do like the fact it comes ready built with a hard disk already installed, so no messing around with that. Cable lengths, they should be sufficient for an average size house, three bedroom, semi, or even a terraced. Connectors, I do like the fact that you can cut these off and recrimp them if they want, but obviously you need to buy a crimping tool to be able to do this. The seals on the actual cable, they're on correctly. There is another system I've reviewed and they weren't on there, which was a bit pointless really, because you'd have to cut it regardless to put it on. So that's quite a nice feature. I'll show it being plugged in, just to show. And then we just tighten the end piece here. And you've got your watertight seal. Yeah. So that's good. So there you go, a very nice system. The fact it even works with an Android app, you don't need to open any ports on your router to enable it to work. So a great system, yeah? The quality is good at 720p. My personal preference is a 1080p system, but this is quite nice regardless. So there you go, thanks for viewing. And don't forget to like and subscribe.